wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'ufiruhu wa nu'minu bihi wa natawakkalu alayhi wa na'udhu billahi min shuroori anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina man yahdihi allahu falamudilla lah wa man yudlilhu falahadiya lah wa nashadu an la ilaha illa allah wahdahu la sharika lah ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وفديناه بذبح عظيم وتركنا عليه في الآخرين صدق الله العظيم وبلغنا رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين My dear respected listeners Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us as slaves and for a human being the biggest honor, the highest station is that they listen to the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and become slaves in the true manner. <coughs> this has been shown to us by the example of our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam time and again. All his life was submission personified. And this is the case with other Anbiya as well. That they showed humanity that our desire, our understanding, our intellect does not matter when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given a command. These days are the first 10 days of Zil Hajj which are very special to every Muslim. Particularly so because they have the 9th and the 10th, those days by whom Allah has also sworn, and those days in which Muslims gather to do Hajj, and in these days Muslims repeat the act of servitude, the great act of servitude, the great act of sacrifice that our great grandfather our Nabi Had Ibrahim ala Nabi salatu wasalam, had performed the Sahaba asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Ya Rasulullah what are these adahi what are these sacrifices the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said sunnatu abikum Ibrahim they are the way they are the sunnah of your father Ibrahim so Last time we had talked about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested Sayyidina Ibrahim والسلام, again and again. And this was one of the major tests among all the other very big ones, unimaginable, unimaginable ones that Ibrahim والسلام, was put through and he succeeded. And we all know the story that Hazrat Ibrahim والسلام, was shown in his dream that he is sacrificing his son. And son, in another place Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has quoted Hazrat Ibrahim as saying that Alhamdulillah alladhi wahabali ala al-kibari Ismail wa Ishaq All praise to Allah who has given me Ibrahim and Ishaq when I had reached old age. So a son that he had got after many dua, a long time of dua in old age. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying when he reached the age of running around and helping his father and some ulama have written that he was 13 years or a mature a person a boy who had hit puberty and then Allah is telling Had Ibrahim والسلام, so the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells his anbiya to do something is either through a an angel that comes to them and tells them that this is the command of Allah. This is the wahi. Or Allah puts them in their heart directly, in their awake state. 
But another way is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows them something in a dream. And the dream of a Nabi is also wahi. And Allah is proving this in the Quran. Allah is certifying this in the Quran that whatever we tell our Anbiya, even if that is a dream, that is still a wahi. So the people today who na'uzu billah out of their disrespect and ignorance and bias say that our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam's hadith does not matter. Even the dream of Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam is certified to be a wahi by the Quran itself. So what about our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam and what about the revelations that came to him? Allahu Akbar. So Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam is shown in a dream. Jibreel does not come to him and say, but he sees it in a dream and he sees it for three consecutive days. The day he becomes sure that this is the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where, where he gets the irfan or the clear understanding that this is the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala happened to be or by the will of Allah of course the ninth of Dhil Hajj. That is why it is called Yawmul Arafah. Yawmul Arafah. The ninth of Dhil Hajj. So this Yawmul Arafah and its sanctity was well established and there before Hajj started. Some people say that Yawmul Arafah is that day when the Hujjaj gather in the ground of Arafat. But this Yawmul Arafah was there before Hujjaj gathered in Arafat. Because Hajj started when Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam called people and Arafah is the day where he got the clear understanding that this is the command of my Allah. So 9 Zil Hajjah itself wherever it is seen according to the moon it will be that day where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam has declared that is Yawm al-Arafah and the fasting and the virtues of that day will be 9th of Zil Hajjah according to the moon of the local place because if we follow our nationalistic desires then we might say that we want to follow a certain country but it does not make any sense it is it does not make any logical sense and it is not proven anywhere from the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam either in fact it did happen in the time of sahaba sayyidina abdullah ibn abbas radiyallahu an somebody came to him and said that i i was in, i was in sham and this is a riwayat in Muslim, this is a narration in Muslim, famous narration that he came and he said that I was there and had Muawiyah radiallahu anh, a well respected sahabi was there as well and it was a general sighting of the moon people saw the moon in Syria in Sham and a lot of people saw it beyond doubt and they started Ramadan Friday night they see the moon they started Ramadan when he comes to Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anh, who's in a different town, a different city, Hazrat Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anh, says, we saw the moon on Saturday night. This person says, the Sahabi says, that is the sighting of the moon of Muawiyah radiallahu anh, not enough for you? He said, no, we'll follow the moon that we saw here in our, in our part of the world. And this is how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa used to do. This is a narration out from Muslim Sharif. So therefore, local moon sighting is the way to go. Otherwise, what if somebody sees the moon before Saudi Arabia? If we see the moon before Saudi Arabia, then what are we going to do? We are going to wait for Saudi Arabia. Or in matters of Isha and Fajr, should we also follow that country? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made a system. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made different times for different places of the world. This is the only practical way, this is the only logical way that we follow our own sunrise, sunset, our own moon sighting. This is how it is supposed to be done. And the other stupid people who say that we follow the calculation and stuff, Islam is a, is, is a deen that can be followed by a simple person as well. You don't have to, be an, you don't have to depend on astronomy to follow Islam. The Prophet has very clearly said, 
that if you see the moon start the month if you see the moon end the month if you do not see the moon because of a cloud then complete 30 days so imagine what the Prophet ﷺ is telling us that the moon might be there but just because it's covered by a cloud complete your 30 days because it's a cloudy overcast sky complete your 30 days so therefore sighting of the moon is and local is the most important the correct way may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant everybody understanding <laughs> so that day when had Ibrahim والسلام, got this recognition this is called Yawmul Arafah wherever there is 9th of Zil Hajj we are strongly recommended by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa to fast on that day the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa has told us virtues of fasting that day it, will, it is an expiation of sins for the past year and the future year and then <coughs> the day of the actual sacrifice which is the 10th of Zil Hajj it starts with the 10th of Zil Hajj but Allah allows us to if you are not able to do it on the 10th then we can also do it on the 11th or the 12th and what we learn from the Sunnah of Hadith Ibrahim والسلام, is that when a Nabi compared to all compared with a direct order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that comes in his heart or Jibreel alayhi salam coming and telling him in clear terms that this is the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah showed him a dream and he saw that dream for three days and he took some time to get a full recognition of what Allah wants from me this tells us that the example of Hazrat Ibrahim والسلام, is to not find excuses because if he had seen a dream he had all the opportunity open that he could have done some ta'wil he could have said that this means this or this means that no he listened to the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as it is although it was so hard that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said وَفَدَيْنَاهُ بِذِبْحٍ عَظِيمٍ and Allah has said this is how tests are taken إِنَّ هَذَا لَهُوَ الْبَلَاءُ الْعَظِيمِ or Mubin what is that? Mubin this is how tests are taken this is how people are tested Allahu Akbar so therefore my dear respected brothers and sisters and everyone to follow the sunnah of sacrifice means that we do not find excuses and do as we have been told rather than saying that what's the point of shedding the blood what's the point of taking lives what's the point of uh, when it's not even helpful to people we could help people in another way none of that there's all year that we could help people in other ways but the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and our beloved Nabi Hadi Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasallam will be established and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam has very clearly said it that in these days there is nothing more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than the actual shedding of blood of the animal ihraqid dam so sacrifice means shedding the blood of the animal slaughtering an animal nothing else and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam has said that somebody who has to do this sacrifice which means that roughly according to our standards these days they have 480 dollars apart from their needs this is the nisab right now and they have this kind of money before the sunset of the 12th of Zilhaj if they get it even a single moment before the 12th of Zilhaj the sunset of the 12th of Zilhaj sacrifice is wajib upon them and it's so important the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam has said that if somebody has not done it if somebody has to to give this sacrifice and they do not do it then they should not even come near our musalla they should not even come near our place of prayer the Prophet ﷺ has shown such displeasure towards such people the final thing is that the Prophet ﷺ once sacrificed a ram a small animal like a goat and said that this is on behalf of my ummah so some people have said that one animal can suffice for multiple people because the Prophet ﷺ used one animal to suffice for the whole ummah but the distinction should be made that the Prophet ﷺ was not presenting a wajib a mandatory sacrifice when it is mandatory sacrifice the Prophet ﷺ, in fact in this same narration it is mentioned that the Prophet ﷺ sacrificed two lambs one from his own side and then one from on behalf of the whole ummah so if somebody has that kind of money 
husband, wife, adult children, whoever, they will give their individual sacrifice first. And then if they want to sacrifice on behalf of the old Ummah, following the Sunnah of the Prophet well and good, great. One animal can suffice for multiple people, millions of people in a nafil sacrifice. The wajib will only be performed one animal per person or if it's a big animal, then seven shares. If a cow or a goat, uh, a cow or a, a buffalo or a camel, then seven shares, uh, seven people can share. رَبَّنَا تَقَبَّلْ مِنَّا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ السَّمِيُّ الْعَلِيمُ وَتُبْ عَلَيْنَا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ التَّوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ Inshallah, Eid Salah will be here according to Moon sighting. It was announced by the Central Hilal Committee that it will be uh, the 10th of the Hajj will be on Monday. So, Inshallah, we'll pray on Monday, 8.15 a.m. Please try to be on time. Jazakallah.